All right, this video is on combining random variables. So we're talking about looking at multiple random variables happening at one time. It's actually very easy, but there's just a couple key rules that you have to understand. All right, here's an example. We actually talked about this example in the last class. This is uh, Pete, and Pete owns a Jeep excursion. And when, when you go on one of Pete's Jeep excursions, he's going to go with two, three, four, five, or six people. He's never going to go with one person. If only one person signs up, he's just not going to go. So he knows that 15% of the time, two people go. 25% of the time, three people go. 35% of the time, four people go. 20% of the time, five people go. And 5% of the time, six people go. So I went ahead and found the average in the long run of how many people he expects per trip and the standard deviation per trip. So every single day Pete makes a trip, he's either going to have two, three, four, five, or six people out on his trip. Now, once again, hopefully through the last video you understand how I got these two values. There's also the shortcut on the calculator, typing in list one as your outcomes, list two as your probabilities. You can get both these values very, very quickly. So what I want to do is talk about a couple changes to Pete's idea here. Now, let's say that we introduced a new random variable and we said the new random variable was done. W. And W was how much money how much money Pete makes per day. Well, let's see. We would need to know how much he charges each person. And let's say that Pete charges each person $25. So to go on this trip, it's $25 per person. Okay, well, what is my new average for how much money? Well, this is actually really simple if you just think about it. He averages 3.75 people. So if I take 3.75, that's how much he averages per trip. And it's typically going to cost $25 per person. All you got to do is multiply by 25. And you get on a typical day, he makes $93.75. Very, very simple. So a very simple idea, $25 per person. He expects 3.75 people per trip times by 25, you're done. Now, if you recall, multiplication does affect standard deviation. So I would simply also take the 1.0897, that's the standard deviation, and multiply it by $25. So 1.087, let's see, 1.0897. Multiply that by $25 and you get $27 and 24 cents. So on a typical day, Pete makes about $93.75, but that number does deviate by $27.25 from 24 cents from the mean. Very, very simple to understand. Very, very easy, I think. I don't think there's any issues with understanding that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is let's talk about an entire week, right? How many total passengers does Pete expect in a week? Well, this is taking the random variable x, and it's talking about seven x's, right? One for Monday, one for Tuesday, one for Wednesday, one for Thursday, one for Friday, right? One for Saturday, one for Sunday. Sorry, I'm squeezing things in over here. So what's happening here is that we have a different random variable for each day, right? Each day, how many people Pete might get on his trip all depends, right? But we do know in the long run, we expect 3.75 people per trip, which means on the first day, he expects 3.75 people. On the next day, 3.75. On the next day, 3.75. On the next day, 3.75. And the next day, 3.75. And the next day, 3.75. And the last day, 3.75. So what does he expect for the entire week? For, so the expected value for an entire week is simply going to be 7 times 3.75. He expects 3.75 per person times up by seven, and in after the entire week, he expects 26.25 total people to have been on his trips. That's pretty easy, right? Well, standard deviation is a little bit trickier. The standard deviation for the entire week is simple. You cannot add standard deviation together. A key rule that I'm going to say several times in this video. You cannot add standard deviations together like you can add means. What we have to do is add the variance, right? The variance for each day is 1.0897 squared. So remember, standard deviation squared is variance. Very easy to figure out. All you got to do is square your standard deviation and you get your variance. So I'm not allowed to add standard deviations. Just a rule that you need to remember. But you are allowed to add variances. So what you need to do is find the variance for each day add my total variance together. So the variance for the first day is going to be 1.0897 squared. So forth. So let me actually I'm going to pull up the calculator here so I could show you. So on the very, very first day, I have 1.0897 
squared for the variance. The second day, I also have 1.0897 squared. So basically, I have to add up seven days' worth of variance. Well, I don't want to type that into my calculator. I'm actually going to do it an easier way. The variance is 1.0897 squared. That's my variance for any day times seven days is a grand total of 8.3121 total variance. Now, that's variance. I want to take the variance and get back to standard deviation. So if I take the square root of the variance, I get standard deviation. So square root of variance is standard deviation. So essentially what I need to do here is I need to take the square root of seven days of variance. So that'd be 1.0897 squared. That's my variance for seven days. Right? If you want to write 1.0897 squared seven times, go ahead. But I think it's easier to multiply in there. But remember, this is variance. And if, if the standard deviation squared is variance, then the square root of variance equals standard deviation. Pretty easy. So I have to take my total variance, square root it. So the square root of 7 times 1.0897 squared gives me a total standard deviation of 2.8831. 2.8831. Two point eight eight three one people. So, in a typical week, he expects a grand total of twenty six point two five people, but the amount of people is going to deviate by two point eight eight three one. Hopefully, figuring out the random variable for how many people is really easy. Just adding three point seven five seven times. Standard deviation, yes, is a little bit tricky. You just have to get used to understanding the idea there that you cannot add standard deviation. You have to add the variance first. Very easy. Just square the square the standard deviations, times it by seven for the seven days, and then square root to get back. Pretty easy even though it's a little bit tricky, not too bad. All right, let's talk about an example that involves a continuous random variable. Okay, let the random variable x be the amount of cereal dumped into a small bowl. Now, how much cereal can be dumped in a small bowl? This is continuous. This is infinite, especially if you get down to decimals. You could dump 8.923467 ounces of cereal into a bowl, dot, dot, dot. So it's definitely a little bit tricky to understand. That's why there's an infinite number of possibilities. So in this case, I'm just going to tell you. The expected value, the average in the long run, is 14 ounces in cereal in each small bowl with a standard deviation of 2 ounces. All right, let's talk about two different types of problems, right? The first problem is say, oh, you know, you know what? I want to convert to pounds. All I want to do is convert to pounds. Okay, well you need to remember that there are 16 ounces in one pound. So to convert from ounces to pounds, all I have to do is divide by 16. So my mu would be 14 divided by 16. So 14 divided by 16 would be 0.875 pounds. Hopefully that is very easy to figure out. Standard deviation does get affected by division, so I would also take the two ounces of standard deviation, divide it by 16. Two divided by 16 is 0.125 pounds. So if all you're doing is converting, pretty easy to do, nothing difficult there whatsoever. All right, now let's talk about multiple bowls of cereal. Let's talk about how much, let's talk about a new random variable here. I'm going to call new random variable M. This is the total of three bulls, okay? The total cereal in three bulls. Well, what do I expect the mean to be? What do I expect the average amount for three bulls to be? Well, that's going to be 14 for the first bull, 14 for the second bull, 14 for the third bull. Very easy. What do you expect to happen the first time? What do you expect to happen the second time? What do you expect to happen the third time? Very, very easy. So 14 times 3 or 14 plus 3, 14, you know, and so forth, would be 42 total ounces. That is extremely, extremely easy. How about the standard deviation for three bulls? Well, once again, I cannot add standard de deviation. So please do not do two plus two plus two. You cannot do that. What you have to do is add the variance. Variance is very simple. Variance is standard deviation squared. So two squared is the variance for the first bull. Two squared is the variance for the second bull. Two squared is the variance for the third bull. Then I have to put a giant square root around all of that to take variance back to standard deviation. So my standard deviation deviation would be the square root of 2 squared times 3. Once again, 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared is the same thing as 2 squared times 3. And I get a standard deviation of 3.4641 ounces. So pretty easy, right? Just have to understand the one trick is working with standard deviation. You cannot add them together. You have to add the variance first. Not too bad, pretty easy. 
Let's do another example here. Now, let y be the random variable for the amount of cereal dumped into a large bowl. Okay, so the average amount of cereal in a large bowl is 23 ounces, standard deviation of 3 ounces. Let me remind you real quick that x above was a small bowl, where there was 14 ounces in a small bowl, standard deviation of 2 ounces. Okay, so let's talk about putting a small bowl and a large bowl together. So let's talk about a new random variable. We will call this new random variable k. This is the combination of a small bowl plus a large bowl. Okay, well what do I expect the grand total to be for a small bowl and a large bowl? Well the small bowl, 14, plus the large bowl, 23. Very, very simple, 14 plus 23, 37. Doesn't get much easier than that. What about the standard deviation for both bowls together? Well, for the third time today, you cannot add standard deviation. However, you can add the variance. So the variance for the small bowl is 2 squared. The variance for the large bowl is 3 squared. Now that I added the variances together, I could take a square root of all of it to get back to standard deviation. So the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared is 3.6056. 3.6056. So that is the standard deviation for the total of two bowls. Very, 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 very simple. All right, one more question to go here. What happens if we want to look at the difference between two bowls? So let's talk about a random variable. Let's call this new random variable P. P is the difference between a large bowl and a small bowl. So that would be a large bowl minus a small bowl. Okay, so what's the difference between a large bowl and a small bowl? Okay, well, the average difference, this is going to be very easy, is just going to be 23 minus 14. Duh, how do you find a difference? You subtract, you guys know that. There's a difference of 9 ounces. A large bowl has 9 more ounces than a small bowl does. Easy, how simple is that? How about the standard deviation? And here's another rule that you just have to remember. Standard deviation and variance always build up. Even if you're talking about subtracting two random variables, the fact that you're talking about two random variables means that the standard deviation and the variance build. So you never ever subtract standard deviation or variance. So you never add standard deviation, you never subtract standard deviation, and variance always builds up. So my standard deviation is going to be the variance for the small bowls, 2 squared, plus the standard deviation for the large bowl, 3 squared, which is the exact same answer I got on the other side when I was adding the two bowls together. The idea is anytime you're talking about two things, whether you're subtracting them or adding them, you're still talking about two things, so your standard deviation always builds up, because the first thing is going to vary, the second second thing is going to vary, and when you have two things that vary put together, they're going to vary more. They're not going to vary less. That's impossible. So even though we're looking at the difference between the large and small bowl, 9 ounces, standard deviation and variance still build up. Always, always, always. All right. This is pretty much the end of the video, but I want to introduce to you guys a couple of the key things I said in this. Rules to remember. Multiplication affects the mean and standard deviation. Please remember, addition, subtraction only affect mean. So remember, that's an old rule we actually learned a while ago. If you're adding to all of your values or if you're subtracting to all of your values, standard deviation doesn't get affected at all. We'll see that in some examples in class. When you're combining random variables together, three things you've got to keep in mind. Means combine very easily with addition or subtraction. Simple. Number two, you cannot add standard deviation. This is the fourth time I've said that now in this video. You must first add the variance, then square root the total variance to get back to standard deviation. All right? Third rule is that standard deviation and variance always build, meaning even if you're subtracting the random variable, still add variance. And that's what we saw in that previous problem. Even when we're looking at the difference between two random variables, standard deviation and variance always build up. They never diminish, no matter what. And that's it for the video. I know those are a couple quick short examples. I hope it's enough to get the ball rolling and we'll do a lot more examples in class.